What's going on boys and girls? My name is Michael SK and welcome back to the Fruit of Grisaya. So last time Yuji kicked some ass because someone decided to do a drive by shooting. Apparently some gang members were involved or something like that. I don't know. It got really confusing for me. I really don't know why it was confusing for me, but whatever. So we left off like right after Yuji kicked some ass. Uh, I actually don't know like anything else that happened. I think he did some framing like by putting uh, some fingerprints on some uh, on some shit. Other than that, I don't really know. So we'll jump in right now. I won't do a long ass intro like I did last time. Uh, but first, first, I'd like to say that I have to. I, I'm very uh, sorry for the uh, for the spamming of these videos recently. I've just been trying to get these out because Christmas I was busy uploading something else, and uh, coming up to Christmas is busy, so I'm a little bit behind. And I want to get all these videos out before the end of the year so I can upload the one hour special of the 200th episode or whatever anyways let's jump into it by the way the next session is going to be just a one hour episode apparently that's the date and time uh it's going to be a one hour episode because it's the 200th episode one hour episode 200th episode yeah whatever um so i hope you guys look forward to that uh the 100th episode was also an hour long and that seemed to do pretty damn well so Hopefully you guys will uh, enjoy this one. But anyways, let's get into this. Well then, I went out of my way to nab a tacky pistol from a Shuhokai underboss. Could just toss it in the window of a police station, but if Officer Bumblefuck, god damn it, proceeds to drop it in the lost and found, my efforts will have been wasted. So what do I do then? The solution's elegantly straightforward. Simple as this. Step 1. Squeeze off a few shots at the police station. Step 2. Toss the gun into some random bush nearby. Step 3. Haul ass out of there. Nice and easy. A board police force is proof of a peaceful city. Nothing to be ashamed of. That said, without the occasional bit of excitement, anyone would get complacent and, sh and slow on their feet. A little cold sweat's only healthy every once in a while. Doing good deeds really does make you feel all warm and fuzzy inside. I think I'll be able to sleep soundly tonight. I guess we can only hope. It's been three days since the shooting at the bakery. Machina hasn't taken a step outside the school grounds after that incident. She's spending even more time inside the dorm than she used to. That said, she's not just moping around gloomily. She's for some reason wearing her school uniform. That I don't understand. I guess we're back to the stupidity and random shit. I'm not even trying to pay attention to this. It's just so bad. どうやって私を守護するのよ。ですが、ミチル様、カニさんは一応生き物でいらっしゃいますし、食材として見ても赤いウインナーよりは数段上かと。そういう問題じゃないよね。あ、違った。こいつカニじゃなくてカニ風味
ゆみちゃんの守護霊なんて炭酸電池なのよ Double A battery? Nah, dude, that's her gender. Just like how my gender is that、uh, attack helicopter. Makina is at least acting like her normal, cheerful self. But according to Amine's testimony, when the girl is alone, she often drops her head and stares at the floor, silently brooding. The cause is obvious enough. Anyone would be depressed after an ugly incident like that. And for that reason, I have an obligation to get off my ass and take action. Yeah, got a job in the city today. Papa. Don't worry, I'll be back by evening. As Makina looks up at me with anxiety in her eyes, I thump a hand onto her head, then vigorously ruffle her frizzy hair around. Sachi, look after her for me. Thanks, maid. Yeah, I'll be back in no time. Papa. What kind of question is that? We're a grown ass man. Just trust me. Nah, dude. Fuck. Nah, dude. Why would I, uh. I don't even know what I was gonna say. I got distracted because I was trying to move my chair up. I'm gonna meet Makina's mother. I'm gonna ask her to leave Makina to me. Okay, when you word it like that. Not even cl- shit. Hold on. God damn it. Oh, okay. I just wanted to make sure my fucking cord wasn't underneath my chair. Uh. Yeah, I don't know what I was saying. What? Like I just said, you've got it all wrong. Anyway, I'll be on my way now. So annoying. Since things have come this far, I have no choice but to talk directly to a figure of authority in the Edisu and appeal for a stop to this coercive, coerce, I don't even know, campaign against Machina. Normally, that would mean directly meeting Machina's grandfather, the previous head of the clan, Edisu Haruchika. But the man sits at the top of a very high peak. It's hard to imagine I'd be able to secure even a chance to negotiate. What's more, precisely because he's so far above the clouds, apparently there's a good chance Haruchika doesn't know much of anything about the recent shooting incident. Seems strange that an acting head executive wouldn't know what's going on in his own organization, but on that point, Sakaki provided me with a fairly convincing explanation last night. <laughs> Okay, going so far so good. Yes. Uh, true enough. Even if you're aware that the process is taking place in an academic sense, There's no way to grasp the exact details of that microso microscopic battle. Even so, I can't just let things stay this way. Fortunately enough, we're human beings, not cells. We should at least be able to negotiate. Irisu Kiyoka? Good enough for me. No one correct me! I'm tired of being corrected, unless I ask for it. Like, I'm fine with, like, okay. A lot of people have corrected me in the many games I've played in terms of visual novels. Not even visual novels, like even other games. And it's fine because I can't pronounce most English words. I'm going to have a hard time pronouncing Japanese names. But unless I really fuck it up and I need, and I just maybe can't even pronounce it, then go ahead and help me out. Otherwise, please stop. I feel embarrassed. 
Magina's mother, is it? Iriske no sousai ga haruchika shi da to wa itte mo. Jijitsu jo no Iriske o shikitte iru no wa sobo deyaru Hatsune san to hahaoya deyaru Kiyoka san na no wa yumei na hanashi ne. Iriske wa jokei no iye na mo. Ah, now that you mention it, Makina had said something like talking to Grandpa won't do any good. I just assumed that she meant Haruchika's son couldn't comply with her request because of his responsibilities to the organization he leads, but maybe she meant that the man's a figurehead, lacking the authority and influence to help even if he wanted to. Well, we're gonna try. It was a valid point, but as I'm always telling Makina, there's no chance of getting anywhere if you don't try. When backing down isn't an option, there's no reason not to test every option you have, even when you know the odds are long. Borrowing Makina's cell, I called her mother, but the woman didn't pick up the phone. After making several attempts at regular intervals, I finally left a sucks, sucks, I don't even know, message on her voicemail. I need to talk to you about Idisu Makina. And this morning, I received a return call directly from Idisu Kiyoka herself. The woman was calling her daughter's cell phone, but a strange man answered. She made no attempt to hide her understandable mistrust. But after I explained that I was acting as Makina's representative, I seemed to earn at least provisional recognition, su successfully convincing her to make time for a face-to-face -face conversation. In order to meet Makina's mother at 1500 hours this afternoon, I take the train alone from Mishima Cape Station into the city. My appointment's at the headquarters of the clan's core organization, Irisu Global. Although I said the city, the building apparently stands discreetly a good distance from Tokyo's core. I'm not fond of trains, but for Makina's sake, I need to try and settle this as quickly as humanly possible. After somehow toughing out 48 miserable minutes on three different trains, I spent half an hour walking the 10-minute taxi drive or ride from the station to the Irisu Global building. <clears throat> Still arriving 15 minutes ahead of time. Alright, here we go, boys. This could be bad. This could be very bad. Or it could be surprisingly well. Considering the scale of the Edisu Enterprises, the headquarters is a surprisingly compact 12-story building. Not any different in size from a branch office in my company. From Sakaki's stories, I'd imagine a towering monument to corporate power and wealth. But this leaves a very different impression. Well, better than getting intimidated by the building right off the bat, I guess. I've been a little concerned about being overwhelmed by some massive skyscraper, so this is a pleasant surprise. You always start off at a psychological minus when negotiating in the opponent's stronghold, so even a small plus like this is something to be grateful for. Drawing the necktie on my school uniform tied around my neck, I make my way quietly through the automatic door in the front of the building then confirm my appointment at the front desk. Thank you, Miss Receptionist. That's a nice name. The Receptionist, a worthy match for Komane Sachi in the utterly expressionless department, guides me to a bank of elevators, where a woman in a clearly expensive dark red suit is patiently holding a door open. I'm meeting a lot of new people, but I can't see them. So, alright, Sawada. Never even opening her eyes, Miss Sawada opens, or offers a perfect 10 degree bow. Returning a small nod of greeting, I enter the red carpeted elevator as instructed. Sinking it to my ankles in the long haired car- wait, what? Sink it- oh, okay, long haired carpet, some crazy carpet. I join my hands behind my back in the at ease position. Miss Sawada moves quietly inside, turning her back to me to press the 12 button for the top floor. On second glance, the panel only has buttons for the lobby and the 12th floor. 
Looks like this is a private elevator to the president's office in the penthouse. When we arrive a few seconds later, Miss Sawara simply murmurs this way quietly before setting off down the hallway. As I follow, I can't help confirming the positions of the windows and emergency exits, as per my usual habit. Gazing outside the windows, I'm less concerned with the pleasant view than potential sniping points. This has got to be an occupational disease at this point. Sort of like a patch of rust inside my mind that won't scrape off. The corridor the secretary leads me down only has one actual door. Inside, there's a modest room about 13 square meters inside, dominated by a desk that's built into the floor. A nameplate reading, Sawada Hiroka, stands on its surface. Presumably, this is my guide's personal office. In the very back of this room, there's more imposing door... Or there's a more imposing door made of thick, expensive-looking wood. Miss Sawada raps on it lightly with her knuckles, calling Kazumi Yuji-sama. Has arrived, ma'am, to the person inside. And the answer she receives in return is spoken in a far more youthful voice than I'd expected. Oh shit, dude, it's older Makina! Holy fuck! I actually kind of expected, like... Didn't Sachi's mother, like, also resemble, like, an older Sachi in some sort of way? <sighs> Damn cartoons. And that's a, that's a thing with cartoons. Like, or at least I say that because I watched cartoons before anime. And I guess, in a way, anime is a type of cartoon. But regardless, you see it in a lot of cartoons. How a character will resemble, uh, or show resemblance to their parents. In terms of looks. Whatever. Miss Sawada opens the door and guides me inside. The moment I cross the threshold, I squeeze both hands into fists at my side, then click my heels together and stand at attention. Kazumi Yuji reporting in. As Irisu Kiyoka, sorry, that's really tough for me to read, watches me bow from behind her desk, her eyes open wide for just a moment. 